What's up everybody? Today we're gonna to be checking out 3D printers in the $500 to $1,000 range. I'm in the market for a new 3D printer, so I'm just checking out what is out there and I'm sharing all my thoughts and opinions with you guys. This is more of like a chill coffee chat type of vibe, just walking through the browser and all the 3D printers. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the video. Before we go ahead and get into all my thoughts and opinions on some of these printers and some of the facts about them, you know, based on their listing pages, just wanna say, I don't own any of these printers that we're gonna be discussing today. You know, I only own the Centauri Carbon and the Bamboo Lab A1. I'm looking at saving up for another printer. So these are printers that I'm looking at. So you're gonna have my thoughts and just like honest opinions. No one's paying me to make this video. I have not received a dime from any, any 3D printer company um, as far as to make this video. So these are just my raw thoughts and opinions on based on everything I've seen on the internet, things like that. If you're looking at printers under $500, check out my latest video. That one, I actually talk about those um, under $500. And all these are gonna be without the multicolored systems because I personally don't use it a lot. Will my next printer probably have it? Yes, because I'm trying to future-proof myself and some things that I wanna do in the future. But overall, you know, very basic. I'm, I'm looking at the prices without the multicolored system. So let's go ahead and get into this. First, we have the K1C. I know a lot of people had problems with the first K1 and now with the K1C coming out, I don't think um, they're having as many issues with this one, at least from what I've seen. Overall, it looks like a pretty good printer. You know, we're at the lower range of the $500 to a thousand here. Uh, it has the capability of the, the multicolored, which, oh, that is a big thing for a lot of people. I mean, the one big thing that I've been looking at right now is my build plate size. You know, is it bigger than the ones I currently have? Is it gonna offer me a little more capability to print um, some helmets? You know, I was trying to fit a manual Warian helmet on the Centauri Carbon. I would have had to size it down a little bit. And that goes for the, the same thing with the bamboos. Um, they're all usually the 256 by 256 um, by 256. I guess if you wanna get real technical, all you know, all three of them. So it, it it really just comes down to what you're you're looking to do with them, right? So here we go. Of course, everything should have a filament runout sensor, power loss recovery, hands-free leveling. A lot of that stuff is standard now. Um, you know, with it being a core XY and it's enclosed, you have the possibility of printing ABS, ASA, all that stuff. The carbon fiber. Um, let's see. I didn't see. Oh, build volume: two twenty by two twenty by two fifty. Immediately, I'm eliminating the K1C. It's just too small for me. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So we're going to move on to the next one. That's just my thoughts overall on the K1Z. It feels like I wasted my time looking at this one. But, you know, I haven't looked at all of these. So in depth, and I thought this was a really good opportunity. Um, you know, hopefully that doesn't create too much tension, just like the Centauri Carbon, this reinforced chain cable. Um, I mean, overall, it's a good looking printer. I, I just can't see myself that the build plate's too small for me. You know, maybe not for some of you, but for me and what I'm intending to do with it, it is too small. So you move on to the K1 Max. Um, this one, <laughs> again, with Creality, it's like they're hit or miss. You know, at $799, you have to go up over $1,000 for the K2, which a lot of people love their K2s. Um, you're at 300 by 300 by 300 for $800. Is it worth it? I've seen a lot of sales on this printer as well. Like you can see, I mean, they have permanent sales at this point on all three printers. I just feel like that's how they sell them. Um, and maybe other countries, I think I've heard laws around that. So I don't know. With that being said, I mean, the K1 Max is just a bigger K1C as far as I'm aware. You're looking at the 300 by 300 by 300. Um, yeah, I mean, it does look like maybe the nozzle's built a little bit different. I mean, I've seen people pick up this printer and they're, they're happy with it. And, you know, some people aren't. I mean, Creality, <laughs> I guess I've kind of heard that they take, you know, you're going to have a lot of work. But, you know, there's not really too many limitations with the K1 Max. I'll probably go ahead and watch some of these videos as far as reviews on the K1 Max to see if it's worth it. I mean, it is it is $800. So you kind of want a printer in that range just to work. Now, this is one right here that actually... They haven't touted too much about being the Ender 5. Now, I did have a buddy who had the original Ender 5, and he, <laughs> let's just say the printer ended up not working at one point. He couldn't figure it out. I wasn't too into 3D printers at the time, so I couldn't really sit there and help him tinker with it or kind of diagnose the issue. But this is like one that flies under the radar, the Ender 5. Um, I've actually haven't heard too many things overall about this, and anything that I've heard has been pretty positive. 
It's a pretty fast printer at the 700 um, mil, was that millimeters per second. Um, so I, I don't know. Like this is an interesting option in these price ranges. How much was it? If we're going through, it is also 789. So it's kind of weird that they have printers competing at the same price, but this one's not enclosed. So you'd have to figure out how to enclose it, but the build volume is huge. So we have 400 by 400 by 400 for a core XY. Like that's, that's pretty good. So I want to say you're you're probably getting some good stuff off this. I mean, I mean, I guess the first few reviews here are three stars, four stars. So I, it, it's it's an interesting. It would be interesting. I'll be interested. Comment down below if you have this printer. Let me know what you you think about it. It's it's interesting um, that they came out with this one. I think they came out with it right around the same time as like the K2 Max or was the Creality High, and people just aren't really talking about it. Um, I don't know. Maybe you haven't even heard of this printer. It, you know, I only knew about it. I saw some random YouTube video where they were trying it out. It looks kind of like old school, old style. I don't know that I would pick this one up now because I think there's, I don't, maybe there isn't better options, but I think there might be better options as far as $800, you know, printing big. I, I don't know. I feel like maybe you just go with a bed slinger since you're not getting the enclosure, but you know, with a core XY like this, it's probably pretty easy to add the enclosure. Now we're getting into some really interesting stuff. And this one I actually did um, quite a bit of research on. Now, this is a bigger printer, the Sobel SV08. Um, at 350 by 350 by 345. Now, if you're looking at building your own 3D printer, it can be pretty expensive. Now, I started looking into like the Voron stuff because I was like, you know what? If I'm tinkering with these machines a lot, maybe I can help people even more by building my own Voron and really understanding the ins and outs of a 3D printer. This is kind of like a, a midway in between. This is, I believe, completely open source. You can hook up Clipper. You can do everything you want. You can make upgrades to the hot end. You know, build yourself an enclosure with this. Um, this is like an in between between a Voron custom kit and just like a standard build your own 3D printer. So, as far as I'm aware, this is like people are either completely satisfied with this or just really not enthused about it. I mean, I've seen even some of you guys comment on my YouTube videos that you you really like it and it's for you. Um, as far as it's been working, it does take some tinkering, but Overall, it's a pretty good printer. Now, at 569, you know, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. So you can even get an enclosure with it for 728. I mean, you're getting up there as far as price. You might be able to build one on your own for that, but you know, you can add touch screen, HDMI touch screens. I think you, you'd probably be better off finding that elsewhere. But you know, it, it it it's really interesting to see what's available for this this printer. I mean completely like upgrading it and doing the things that you want to it. Um, not being attached to any one software is also interesting. Uh, I mean, it's something that you definitely would tinker with, have some fun with and, you know, kind of go from there. Um, I don't know that <laughs> I don't really know what else to say with it. One day I'm definitely either going to do like a rat rig, a Voron kit or, or something. It's just right now it's, it's out of my price range. So, um, it's something, and when I say out of my price range, I'm not saying the 569 and what I'm looking at. I'm just saying, well, I mean, 569, then you add and build your own stuff to it. But the, the Voron kits are out of my price range right now um, as far as what I want to do. And I just want a printer that prints currently. I need some reliable printers, and then I'll go into, you know, custom kits and stuff like that. So ones that we talked about um, also in the last video were the Cobras, and now you can do the Cobra Max. So you're in the $500 range. This thing is massive. Like, I, I even talked about this a little bit in my other video, the, the Cobra 3 Max, and I'm just mentioning it here because it is in the $500 range. 420 by 420 by 500. What are y'all printing? Like, I don't know. I, this is huge. Like, I don't need anything this crazy in my, in my setup. So just thought I would touch on it. This is in the $500 price range, but you're going to be able to print anything you want on this outside of like a house. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. I Again, you can also do the multicolored with this to make it 719, which is pretty interesting. Keo prints on YouTube or however you, I, I'm sorry if I butch, butchered that name or how you say it, but he, he, he does touch on um, a lot of the Anycubic Cobra stuff. So he, check out his videos. I think you'd be probably satisfied even with this printer 
for, for what it is. All right, so now we're getting into like the craziness. Um, I guess not the craziness, but the most popular print farm printers uh, are gonna be some of the Prusas, right? So th the interesting about thing about this one is that you can buy the kit and there's a pretty sizable price difference between $729 and $999 when you buy the kit. But man, this thing looks pretty complicated to build. Same, it's like, it's almost like you're buying, I mean, you are buying a kit, right? Uh, I assume it comes with really good instructions. Everyone speaks very highly of Prusa, but if like you were starting a print farm, do you really want to sit there and build like 10 of these? Probably not, but you know, I guess it just depends on who you are. Like maybe you want to save that, that $250. Maybe it only takes you like three hours to build this. So you do save like $50 an hour at that point. So, or $250, you know, total. I, that's quite, that's quite a bit if it took you three hours, but I don't think it's going to take you three hours. I don't know. I, I'm just rambling on the Prusa at this point. So I, again, I thought it was pretty interesting. I thought for 729, you know, maybe it's a good kit for me to buy. Um, but it comes down to one thing with this is ultimately the build size. I thought this would be a great printer. I was like legitimately looking at like, when can I buy this? When am I going to have the money to buy this? And then I saw the build volume, unfortunately, was pretty low. I think it's 220 by 220 by like 250. Uh, let's see if we can find it here real quick. Yeah, 250 by 210 by 220. It's just too small for me. If you're printing parts and stuff, I've heard that these are better than Bamboo Lab. They're better than anything on the market as far as just like reliability. So they're, they're built well, everything. Um, but... You know, it's it's just it's just too small. I that's just what it comes down to for me. So I guess maybe it's not too small for you, but for me, unfortunately, it's too small. Uh, I think for like a third printer, I might pick one of these up just to have some experience with Prusa. Uh, and they do offer a bigger one, but it's substantially more expensive. So we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, but you know, this this is going to be a good option for you. If you're just looking for reliability, you're printing like those parts that like ABS, ASA, you put this in an enclosure or something, this is a potential option for you. And they also have the Core 1 from Prusa, which is a little more expensive, but we'll talk about that one again in another video. All right. So we have another printer here. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because this one seems like it's not popular at all from Kitty. Um, this is just another one of their printers, but it has a huge build volume. We're looking at 325 by 325 by 315. I guess it's not huge, but it's pretty big. It's at 750 bucks. It looks super ugly. Um, it looks like I'm in some sort of sci-fi film um, that, you know, all the people die because an alien got on board. Not alien, but I think there was another one called like Life or something. It looks like it's straight out of this this movie <laughs> that or that movie. Like, I don't know. Th this is not their, their most popular printer. So we're going to just kind of move on. I, I personally I personally wouldn't buy it just because it's not. I, I just don't see people buying this one. I see people buying, you know, the, the four. So we'll move on to the four. The Kitty Plus 4 3D printer. This one, to me, is definitely in the realm of something I could buy. I've seen a lot of good things about it, but I've also seen... You know, people had some issues early on with some uh, parts in the United States. They were overheating. They started smoking. Um, you know, there's been some interesting stories out there about this one. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's big. It's going to print your helmets in one go, the 305 by 305 by 280. It's actually got an active chamber heating, which is the only printer on this list that does have that in the price ranges. So that's where it makes it really interesting. You have the Kitty Box multicolored if you're interested in that. Um, $7.99 though. It's, you know, it's a it's a beefy price tag, right? When you're talking over $500 for any of these printers, it's, it's pretty expensive. So what are my reservations with this one? I think my reservations are more that the other printers are more popular. So on the internet, you have more forum support, things like that. Now, I've... Again, I've seen a lot of good things on this printer, um, and they've, they've been selling it for a decent amount of time now. So it's definitely in the realm of me looking at to pick it up. Um, I, we'll see. I I don't know. I, I know a few of you actually commented on some of the videos. You like it. Clipper, you know, you can customize it. You can upgrade a few things in this one as well. So it's a very interesting printer. I'm definitely looking at it because you can print everything you need to. I really want to, for my next printer, 
if it's not just like a cheaper printer under $500, yeah, I, I really want to print ABS, ASA, um, something that's reliable for printing those things for a lot of the props that I'm building. So it, it is definitely one on my short list. All right, so moving on to the printers that they're plug and play, guys. You know, as much as a lot of people hate on Bamboo and, you know, them closing out their software, people are worried about them potentially having access to how you use your printer, everything like that. At the end of the day, Bamboo Lab are plug and play as you as plug and play as you can get for 3D printers. So we'll start with you have the P1P. Now, if you're looking at this and you're wondering, why would you get the P1P over the P1S? Well, if you don't need these enclosures for printing ABS, ASA, any carbon fiber materials, then you're saving yourself a hundred bucks. But if you think at any point you're going to use those materials, I would probably go with the P1S, um, you know, or you can get the P1P now And something interesting that I wanted to show you guys was they have a whole bunch of customization just right on the Bamboo Lab Wiki, like for printing on the side, you know, adding panels, stuff like that. It's definitely interesting, um, you know, they're, they're, that they're adding all that. So going back to the P1P, it's basically going to be a P1S without the panels. You know, it's got the 256 by 256 by 256. You can, you can print anything you want, mainly probably PLA, PETG, um, stuff that doesn't, you know, need the enclosure. So it's it's an interesting option if you're looking at the P1S, you want to save yourself a hundred bucks. All right. So finally, we have the P1S. Now, this is the printer I would purchase if you were in the market for anything under a thousand dollars, like... A, you know, people use this for their print farms. It has come up because of tariffs, but if if all else fails, guys, just go with this printer. It's going to be reliable. It's going to do everything you need it to do. Um, a lot of people love theirs. And honestly, I don't really see any negative comments about it other than the people calling me a bamboo shill and hating on me because I like the bamboo love printers. But outside of that, guys, you can get like this one where it has like the hub where you can Hook up 16, yeah, that's kind of expensive. I would just go with the 799 because I 799 because I don't print in color, but you know, this got the 256 by 256 by 256. These printers just work straight out of the box. And if you if you're having trouble deciding what to go with, just go with the Bamboo Lab P1S. If you guys made it this far in the video, I truly appreciate you for watching. You know, I know these are longer chill type videos that you kind of just tune in and listen. So again, I really appreciate it. With that being said, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and comment down below to help the algorithm. Uh, again, I just can't <laughs> stress how much I truly appreciate all the support recently. And guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.